In part one, we'll look at simple cash basis businesses that generally sell products. What distinguishes these small businesses from other service-based businesses is mostly the fact that they typically sell products for cash. After the exchange, they generally have no need to keep track of amounts their customers owe them. In other words, they don't need to keep track of accounts receivable. For these small and relatively uncomplicated businesses, business owners need to ensure that all transactions are properly recorded and categorized. Generally, your bank and credit card company automatically performs most of the recording functions. However, only you will know what a specific transaction was for. So, while you can harvest transactional data fairly easily and download it, you will need to categorize it yourself. Keeping records is vitally important, and someone in your company must take responsibility for capturing and storing transaction receipts and other documents that are important for your business. In this workshop, we'll try and share some tips for digitizing, storing, and finding documents and receipts when you need them. This workshop will show small business owners how to leverage online banking, credit cards, and other online resources to prepare and categorize simple cash basis journals. Their accountants can then compile these efficiently into a year-end file. Combined with simple techniques for digitizing and storing receipts, many of our simplest cash basis businesses can meet most of their accounting needs just by harvesting this transactional data from online sources. For more complicated businesses that provide services to multiple clients on account, we'll also look at the importance of online accounting software. In particular, we'll consider the importance of invoicing and the tracking of receivables. The process of harvesting transactional data looks something like this. First, the owner downloads all of his or her bank account transactions from the bank, usually in CSV or comma-separated value format. Then they read the data into a spreadsheet system, like Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets or LibreOffice's free open-source Office productivity suite. Next, they format the data and categorize it. The accounting technician then summarizes the categorized data into a pivot table, and then they post it to a working trial balance. At SBA Canada, we developed a complete, customizable working trial balance package designed for accountants and accounting technicians. Our self-study Cloudware course is available free of charge for members of the Hatchery or SBA Canada. Where the heck did we put the receipt for our shipment? Did we get a tracking number from Canada Post? Does that sound like something you might either say yourself or hear from a colleague? A few days ago, I returned some computer memory I'd ordered from Amazon. At the time, I got a receipt from Canada Post that had a tracking number printed on it. Of course, I should have kept it, but I'm not very good with the stupid little paper receipts I get from retailers. Luckily, I was able to go online to my Amazon account and see the status of the shipment. Keeping track of receipts is tedious for most of us. In this section, we'll look at some tips for keeping and finding receipts of various kinds. Today's computer systems come with sophisticated file or document storage systems. Microsoft uses Windows Explorer. On an Apple computer, the equivalent system is called Finder. While Windows Explorer is the file browser included with the Microsoft Windows operating system, Macs use Finder to browse and manage files on the computer. You can access Finder by clicking on the Finder icon in the dock. If you're new to Macs and find Finder a bit different, don't worry. It just takes a little getting used to. No matter which operating system you use, and that includes other common operating systems such as Chrome or Linux, there is a functional file storage system that forms an integral part of the operating system. You simply need to learn your way around your particular file storage system in order to build the digital equivalent of the old-fashioned file room your parents and grandparents had to contend with. Not unlike the old-fashioned paper-based file rooms full of metal filing cabinets that these computer-based systems replaced, it takes a fair degree of thought and attention to detail to file documents so that you know where to look for them. Careless filing makes retrieving documents next to impossible, or at least painfully slow. While Windows Explorer itself offers rudimentary search capabilities, these too are painfully slow. The good news is that there are many alternatives, at least some of which you probably already have. Subscribers to Microsoft Office, the world's most popular Office productivity software, also receive a subscription to their OneDrive cloud storage system. 
This not only provides additional storage space, but also much more sophisticated and faster search capabilities. If your business has its own website with a custom domain name, you often have a Google domain and access to additional storage in a Google Drive account. This also provides more sophisticated and faster search capabilities. There are other advantages offered by these cloud storage systems. First, the files can be accessed anywhere that you have a decent internet connection. Second, you can readily share files with team members and other collaborators. In addition to OneDrive and Google Drive, there are other more sophisticated and expensive options. We use a product called Citrix ShareFile in our accounting practice. The beauty of these commercially available options over your own web server-based system is that they invariably have built-in security. From our perspective, it makes more sense to rely on a system with enough resources and enough exposure to ensure that files are well protected. Of course, in order to file a document into a digital file storage system, you may have to convert a paper document into a digital document. These days, we don't use printers as much as we used to. However, there are many inexpensive printers that include scanning capabilities, and your smartphone has a camera that converts just about any paper document into an image file. Retailers often send a copy of a purchase invoice to your email address, saving you the trouble of scanning or taking a picture of your receipt. Hopefully you'll find some of these ideas useful, but ultimately you'll still need an organised and systematic approach to ensure that you can save and later find the receipts that are important to operating your small business. Our smallest businesses can often function pretty well using a cash basis system during the year, with one exception, getting paid. If you're like most Canadian small businesses, you probably sell services. Most often, customers don't expect to pay for services until you've finished providing them. They want to see what you've done before they pay you for it. Even the building trades, which theoretically produce goods, often have to build their goods to order, which is really a lot more like providing a service than selling a pre-existing thing. As a result, you typically have to keep track of materials and your labour. Once you've finished, you present your customer with an invoice or a bill. Then your customer owes you money. This is where much of the complexity comes from, for our smallest businesses. It's also pretty important since that's what we operate small businesses for. That is, to get paid. And every business is a little bit different. Some businesses work almost exclusively with just a few or even just one customer. That is conceptually much simpler than working on multiple small jobs or projects at once, particularly if you have many different customers. In this workshop, we'll first look at some very simple situations. To do that, I'll have to give you a little background on our prototype business. I spend about half my time on a small rural island near the capital of British Columbia. A home baker on the island sells bread directly to residents. She has a small shed adjacent to her home where she keeps the bread and a locked honour box with a slot for customers to insert their cash payments. After a while, she got customers to write down their names and email addresses and she gave them her email address. That way, after taking our bread, we could send her an electronic transfer. Her new and improved system meant the money was deposited automatically into the bank, thus saving her the hassle of depositing it herself. There are actually two home bakers on the island. The second gets his customers to pre-order the bread on his website for pickup on either Thursday or Sunday in the parking lot of the local shopping mall at specified times. He also uses electronic transfers. Obviously, his system is a little more secure since you have to pre-order the bread and he makes sure that you only pick up loaves that have your name written on the bag. I would presume that his website has been programmed to produce a list of customers and their orders. Otherwise, he wouldn't know what to bake for them. Both of these bakers are selling products. In each case, there is an exchange of goods for cash. The accounting for sales in these businesses is about as simple as it gets. They are properly and easily accounted for on a cash basis. Once they have been paid, the money finds itself in their bank accounts. There is no need to record the transactions. They can simply harvest them by downloading the transactions from their bank. Next, let's look at a service business. We could, for example, look at the business of a website developer who creates e-commerce websites for the likes of our second baker. The baker and the web developer must agree on either a fixed price or an hourly contract. If they agreed on a fixed price contract, the two would have to agree on when payment was to be made. If payment was made after completion of the website or on an hourly basis, 
The baker would owe money to the web developer once the work was done. This would result in the preparation of an invoice describing what was done and how much was owed by the baker to the web developer. From the web developer's point of view, the amount owed to them is called an account receivable. From the baker's perspective, it would be called an accounts payable. Our first set of transactions didn't result in either accounts payable or accounts receivable. Bread was simply sold for cash. These types of transactions can easily be accounted for on a cash basis. However, the transaction between the web developer and the baker should be accounted for on an accrual basis, which is a little more complicated. The web developer must keep track of the work done, the invoices submitted, and the cash received. The baker should also keep track of what he owes, but can probably rely on the web developer for that, for obvious reasons. The more customers a business has, or the more complicated the materials and services provided, the more complicated the system required to track all this information. For a cash basis business, there may be very little need for a sophisticated accounting or bookkeeping system. Similarly, if you only have one or perhaps two customers that you work for, you may be able to handle the complexity yourself without resorting to setting up a formal accounting system. But if you need to issue invoices and keep track of payments from multiple clients, you should probably consider one of three commonly used accounting systems. These are one, QuickBooks Online, 2. Wave Accounting, 3. Zero Accounting. In addition to tracking receivables well, they make it easier for your clients to pay by credit card. Making it easier for your customers to pay you is invariably a good idea.